What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are back at our favourite place, the industrial unit um, on the industrial complex we're doing some works on. So it's been about a week since the last video. Um, I haven't got on uh, much further with, with the mains. I was waiting on um, this enclosure, would you believe it? Just a simple empty enclosure and a T for the trunking. So it's a unitrunk trunking system. It's a quick fix system. Um, so it seems to be quite hard to get hold of at times. Um, but yeah, I'll get onto that, that trunking system more in a bit. But um, yeah, we're gonna be focusing on getting this trunking finished, getting the uh, contactor enclosure mounted, getting these armoureds and these NYYs put away into the top of it, you know, getting the armoured glanded off and just moving on further with the board because it, um, it has been going stale for, for a little bit over here. But in the rest of the unit, it's gone pretty well. Um, all the circuits are in, they're all fixed, um, almost all second fixed. So I'll, I'll sort of take you through all of that. Um, all of the existing lighting and stuff has been validated, tested um, and made good as well. There's quite a lot of works there to bring that sort of up to standard as well. Um, but yeah, we've just been ticking over for, for a few days. We haven't been here the whole week and stuff anyway. So um, yeah, but I'm going to yeah, start cracking on with that. Before I do, I just wanted to mention today's video sponsor, Tradeify. So Tradeify is a job management software uh, that changes the way you work for the better. I've been using it for a couple of months now and um, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Gets you super organised, um, loads of features. I'll put the link um, in the description. You can head over to the website, check it all out. Um, they've got a great um, support team as well. So if you do sign up, um, you can jump on a, a Zoom call with someone from Tradeify. They'll show you how the software works, um, all of the features that you know are either applicable to you or, or might help you out. Um, and yeah, they'll, they'll really support you and help you integrate your business with Tradeify. So yeah, head over, check that link out. There's a 14 day free trial. And if you choose to sign up, use code residual for 50% off three months as well. Um, yeah, link in the description. So, like I said, this is going to be the primary focus today. So, if you remember from the last video, this is going to be rising up. Um, it's going to tee across to this top bit of header trunking, um, and then it's going to continue on up, come across again, very similar to what it's doing already. But yeah, come across again uh, just below that tray. Um, and there'll be this enclosure mounted. So I've actually made that piece up. Um, I've tried to be a bit more organized today um, just because the last video it was great to show you the process of it all, um, but it takes so much time to sort of do that as I've prepped all of these bits, done loads of measurements and stuff like that. There'll still be a bit of tweaking and stuff because there always is, but I find if you prep all of your pieces, it's just like um, putting the puzzle together after that, you know? Um, so yeah, you spend a little bit more time prepping, but now I can just throw everything up and just focus on sort of building it all. Um, but yeah, this bit of tray's in now as well. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, it's just a bit of six inch. It's got the G clamp supporting it uh, across the steel and then um, just sets onto the wall, two bits of uni just bracing the bottom of it. And then yeah, our cables come onto it. So we G clamped along. Unfortunately, the MYYs, um, were too short to take the higher route, which is what I, want. I wanted them to all come from above really. Um, but yeah, they had to sort of come down that strap across and then, um, yeah, like so. But um, yeah, you know, it looks neat enough anyway. And they're just all completely G clamped in now, all the way down. Uh, cam's just over there on the lifter, sorting out the outside lighting circuit. So that one in the middle is actually a PIR. Um, so we've taken the feed there, so I'm gonna get switched. And then there's a light there. There's a light the other side of the roller shutter door. Just over there, I don't know if you can see, but the light switches in and just above it is a spur, which then goes onto the roller shutter control. And then this one's in as well. So it just sort of runs along here. Um, and then very similar, we've got the, controls for it. They're in a bit of a bad way at the minute because we've been using the generator while there's no power to get this open and closed. But yeah, we've got the key control and then that'll be a few spur. And then all the all the lighting has been sorted out as well now. So lots of um, lots of segments of the cable that run along these stills all the way across. Um, one cable was sort of um, G clamped uh, or girder clipped, sorry. 
um, but the other ones were just metally tied to it. So and it was like that, unlike pretty much every one. So we've had to go through and obviously support those other cables because they're not going to be, in the event of a fire, uh, you know, supported against premature collapse. So yeah, there's been loads of stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, we've been pulling off to other jobs as well because this is a job local to us. So we're the sort of local boys at the minute, if you will. But um, yeah, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to start prepping this, taking you through the process. Um, like I said, I've prepped most of it. There will still be a few bits that need making up, but I've done like all the pack linen and stuff like that, um, just so that that's all sort of done. Um, and I can just show you um, it going together, basically. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll crack on. I made this piece up here. So this just sits on here. Um, and then the T piece interconnects it in and I have had it bolted through, it is quite solid, but I just want a couple of feet on it behind it. So I've made these up. They're just 100 mil long and they've already been uh, treated with gal spray and end capped and all that sort of stuff. So it's just a case of, um, yeah, marking them. Like I said, I've done a lot of pre-marks as well. So I've got these little marks here. So I'm gonna set up the laser, line them through. Um, and then once the feet are on, we'll then transfer that measurement onto the trunking, driller holes, and then um, that can just sit on the back here, get bolted through, and then this whole bottom section sort of done. We can start looking at uh, focusing on this top section and getting that all tied in. So yeah, we'll, we'll crack on with that now. They do do a, um, a bracket, which allows you to height adjust as well. Um, the one that I got, well, that one that came with this, um, isn't it's like a basic one right they're marked up so now i just want to ping this line vertically across the edge of this trunk in there we go and once that's actually formed properly yeah that will be our outer edge cool little rings are now for reference the same with this one So the ones I'm finding that are working best are these. So just little pan heads basically, about 25 mil long. Um, but yeah, I saw a comment about why did you why did you fix it to uni? And what it is is someone said, oh, you know, th these four fixings holes would have been enough. But honestly, I put, I don't know, about 10 fixings in that uni and half of them were good, half of them were bad. Um, any that were, weren't great, we, we obviously redone and stuff like that. And now it's solid, it's holding to the wall. But honestly, I wouldn't want this board just mounted via four of these screws to that. Um, there's obviously other benefits to the uni as well. You've got heat dissipation up the back. It's never gonna get that hot, but um, yeah, in high load applications and stuff like that, you've got those benefits. Um, and also you're a lot more versatile with mounting stuff with uni. Um, it takes a lot longer. It, like you know it's more time consuming and stuff like that but i just find with uni you can line stuff through and and, and all sorts it's a bit like plumbing you know um, look at any industrial plant room all the pipes are mounted on, on the on the, on rails aren't they and stuff so it's just a lot easier to make it look a lot prettier i find um and yeah it's adaptable and stuff like that um you've got room around the back too and yeah i just prefer it if i can do it then I will. Um, but yeah, obviously in, in Doris's, um, under Doris's stairs with a domestic fuse board, it's probably not warranted. But um, yeah, the main reason we're doing it here is because of these, like that literally that whole wall's flexing, you know. Um, it's really, it's about a millimetre thick. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's tiny, um, this sheet metal, and then it's just full of insulation, which is nothing to grip onto. So yeah, that's why we're, we're doing this. Even these are just gonna have two fixings in, which is gonna be a bit, you know, um, but yeah, we'll just have to make sure we get a decent fix in. Just wrap it up, cool. Yeah, um. Get it leveled, which it is now. And then bang another fix in, in, so that's quite tight. Um, the other thing I'm finding is to do the drilling of the self tap with the impact driver but then actually just nip it up with, um, with just a screwdriver basically, because you can get a real feel for the, the torque being applied then basically, rather than the impact just going, going crazy. So that's decent then. 
Now we can slot this in. Make sure we're happy with it. Grab a level or use this line out of ping and ping in. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Right, okay. And then just want to grab a sharpie. A little mark, something that we can scratch off afterwards, but yeah, I'd say yeah, I'd say yeah, cool. And then I can just transfer that line along the back, drill two holes ready for um, some roofers, some gutter bolts to pass through, um, and go into some zebs to hold it all in. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm also going to mount the T. Um, beforehand because it'll be a nightmare trying to get those fixings in. So I'll get the team out here. I should still be able to get to those, so that'll be okay. Um, and those ones I should, well, I'm gonna have to be okay on them. Might have to get the little Cyclops Mini out to do those. But yeah, cool, we will uh, we'll do that. off again nothing crazy right, it is a bit over the top but it's a very damp warehouse we look after a lot of swimming pools um, we've just taken them on over the last year and like so many failures in like you know making considerations for external influences every board's rusty every tube's rusty all the trunking's rusty and they've done a nice job they really have but just little things where you let the rust get in and then it spreads like a like a cancer um, here um, you might get somebody who's going to seal it all up and stuff but there's holes everywhere. There's daylight coming in through so many holes. Um, it's been raining here a lot as well, being April and stuff. Um, it, like the, there's so many wet patches and stuff. It's just a damp place. So I'm just trying to give it the best opportunity at life, basically. Um, you're not going to stop it completely, but yeah, if I can, um, if I can give it half a chance, then um, yeah, why not? It only takes a second, doesn't it? So yeah, um, just wait for that to dry. That's looking sweet. Um, I'll mount the T as well. I just wanted to say I had a lot of people commenting on one of the other videos as well about um, the breaking down the knowledge and stuff. So I just wanted to say like I, I like doing it. It helps me work. Um, and if I can help an apprentice and stuff like that, then I'm all over that. But um, in no way am I a teacher. <laughs> um, I've been doing this nine years. I'm 24 but I've got so much to learn myself. I've got my whole career ahead of me and every day I'm learning. So, you know, I might not always get it right. Um, I don't profess to know everything. Um, and honestly, if I do get something wrong, I'll hold my hands up. Um, I also like a discussion. You probably know in the comments, um, if someone wants to start stating facts and stuff, I'm always, uh, you know, up for a good debate, good discussion, especially about this, what I love. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, um, I'm glad you're enjoying the knowledge. Um, anything that I can share, but um, yeah, I, I don't see myself in that light is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it, but yeah, please don't run away with it. Um, I'm not trying to be an lecturer or anything like that. Um, and I've got a lot to learn myself, so yeah. Um, but there is plenty of, plenty of good people online, uh, GSH Electrical, for instance, the E5 group. Um, I'll put their links below. There's loads of good places, sources for knowledge that I use, Sparky Ninja as well. Um, so yeah, if you do want to seek that, that knowledge um, through video content and those guys as well I can definitely recommend and they've helped me a lot through my career too so yeah um, I'm gonna mount this T blow that a bit so it speeds up and um, this gal is so cold in here the gal spray is taking ages but I mean I don't know if heat helps it anyway but maybe um, but yeah um, I'll get the T on and then we'll probably cut the camera until that's dry and we can get that mounted um, yeah, that is literally from a um, from an advent calendar. 
you know, the little, the little weirer ones. Um, I used to think it was so cringe, and now every year I find myself getting one. <laughs> Some Zebs will pull these out. Big Betty. There we go. Get end cap back on. Lovely time, so yeah, there you go. So what this means is we've just got full access to the top and the bottom board for the trunk in. Um, I like to do this on lots of main setups, to be fair, um, if I can. But yeah, it just leaves um, leaves loads of play, loads of room. Um, you can bolt stuff to this if you want to. Cable entry, you could drop some tray down here, cable enter into it too. Gives you loads of adaptability in the future. Um, and yeah, it's just just a good way of doing things. I was always taught if you can, then yeah, definitely do it. So yeah, that's what I was on about with those um, roofers. It's not ideal, but you know, we all, uh, we all make mistakes. And like I say, you're governed by these pre-tapped holes. It's the holes you make. Like I've done all right there. They've got to be bang on. But um, yeah, if they're not, then you end up in situations like this where I've tried to re-drill them. You've got a little bit of show in there, look. Um, and then, um, yeah, in the end, I've just had to put these through as if you didn't have the quick fix trunking system, you would just be doing this anyway. So, you know, um, but yeah, just got the feet sitting flush, look. And that's obviously nice and tight, just roofed on there and there. And then, um, yeah, that's all bolted round and through. Um, that's that packs in there, head of trunking, got the same here. Um, so yeah, it's looking sweet. Um, this is going to get mounted up the top. It's literally the same, same width and stuff as that, but obviously it will go right up the top. And then those four MYYs will get glanded into this trunk in and the armoureds. Um, the armoureds, apart from the contact or control, the armoureds will come down and go straight into the board. The MYYs are going to get put through the contactors first and then it will just allow us to extend them as well because you can see they're quite short. So they'll get extended through there and then singles down into here too. Got the contactors over here. So these are just simple ones. You can get real, real technical um, relays and all sorts, but these are just your, your standard sort of contactors. Um, so I'll explain what the crack is with them. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, I remember when I was an apprentice and people would say about contactors and I'd get a bit unnerved and, and not really know what people were banging on about. But once you realise how they work, it is so simple. Uh, they're just a fancy switch, basically. Um, you have more trouble trying to contain them and wire them because of what they are. <laughs> you know, um, it's generally in trunking, in dim rail enclosures and stuff like that. Then, um, yeah, the actual the actual what connections and the way it works is very, very simple. Um, but yeah, they are just a, a smart switch, I guess. Um, but you might even call it a dumb switch because you're just using just using voltage um, to, to operate it. So yeah, um, I'll show you that. But for now, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna ping the laser up to line through of those two end caps. That will then tell me where to mount the other bit. Um, I'm gonna go quite tight to the tray. Uh, we'll have to snip some of them off to gland those armors in. But like I said, that was done days ago now um, so yeah I wanted it just to look sweet for the time being so yeah a couple of those types will get snipped um, once that's mounted we'll start glanding them in I've got these two larger bits of uni um, so these will sit behind the board um, obviously all leveled up all looking sweet like so and they also just run through into the trunk in there look. so that will hold that section and then I've just got some more feet made up just to take the trunk in across and round where need be. So yeah, we'll uh, get some bigger steps in. Um, I haven't got any of mine, so I'm going to be using some of the sausage steps that they've got. Um, but yeah, they'll do the job. And then, um, yeah, we'll get that mounted and start messing around with all that. So now we're just going to mark where the fixings holes are. Now obviously, we're, we're fixing to the uni, but we need to incorporate these holes into where we mount our uni, otherwise it'll be no good. So by doing this, we basically now know our uni needs to cover these 
holes and thus we can fix this trunk into it. So, yeah. So now I'm going to flip these round because I feel like I've got my back to the camera and I'm also twisting a lot, which is uncomfortable. Um, so like I say, we've sort of governed by where I put these marks. That's where we want our uni to be. So make sure we're nice and centered with those. That's sitting level. Go. The good thing about the Hager enclosures is the slots for the fixings are at a diagonal, so you get quite a lot of play actually with, um, with where you can fix them. I'm supposed to be going to um, quite a good job tomorrow, but I think it's been cancelled. But I'll try to show you it um, whenever we do do it. But it's just at a local football club change the incoming tails, I think they're like 50s, um, 35s, 50s maybe, um, up to 150s, would you believe it, um, just because they've got that football pitch where they've had a new training pitch added and uh, that's the additional load requirements um, that they want, so I think they're a bit undersized anyway, hence the massive jump, um, but yeah, it'd be 150 singles, um, crimping, all that sort of stuff, putting them away. And uh, we get to work with a cool guy from UKPN as well, who, who uh, will manage the, obviously the switching off and all that sort of stuff. So it'll be a cool job to show you actually. Uh, and it'll be a bit different from all this stuff because by the time this video is out, I would have been knocking these out quite a bit. Um, and yeah, you lot might be getting a bit bored of this place. Sweet. So I'm happy with that now. Just put these end caps back in. And then now we just need an end cap on the left hand side. And then our 90 down, we're turning into here. And then, uh, yeah, we are done. Right, guys, so we are back after some lunch. Um, nothing too exciting, just a little sandwich from the local shop. Um, so now I'm going to slide this in. This is this prefabricated corner, 90, sweeping 90. Um, they line up on this one, which is a good start. Yeah. Um, and then laser, once that's back fully, is on, which is what we want. So yeah, I'm going to put two feet in, using this as a guide, cut a bit of trunk into suit. That can go in, we'll get bolted down, we'll get all the lid cut, and then we can um, look at getting all these glanded in and, and get onto the more interesting stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna um, take a measurement, get these feet marked out, and then uh, yeah, get this all fixed up. So I've seen a lot of stuff on social media recently about what, as a electrician putting content out there, what we should and shouldn't show. Um, and it's hitting home with me, I think. Um, I'm, I was very open. Um, and some stuff I still am, but I think we need to find that sweet spot between sort of showing too much showing too little and uh, you can still explain stuff to an electrician without necessarily showing people the juicy bits but yeah it's quite controversial you know because um, I guess I could show a layman how to do something they shouldn't um, which is a very valid point um, so yeah I think like when it comes to containment and stuff like you, you know what I mean if you want to put a load of trunking up in your own time by all means but I think when it comes to the connections and the science and stuff I'm going to try and leave enough out so that an unskilled or an idiot, so to speak, 
couldn't do something they shouldn't. But um, yeah, still allow people and electricians to get value from it and get learners to get value from it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try and walk that line a, a little bit tighter if I can. It's tricky because I just enjoy making these videos at the end of the day. Obviously there's benefits to it, you know, there's ad revenue, and, you know, um, publicity and all these other things that people tell me that I'm in it for. But um, like, to be honest, I'm not exactly, um, I'm not exactly Kim Kardashian, do you know what I mean? I just enjoy making content about electrics. My Instagram shows that, I've been doing that for years. Um, so, there's no ulterior motives here. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think sometimes people think that I'm doing this for, for the wrong reasons and that's why I show stuff that I shouldn't and, and, and whatever, but honestly, for me, it's, um, it's out of enjoyment. I don't need to do this. Um, I don't need the, uh, um, without sounding chauvinistic, I don't need, I love the ad revenue, of course, and it supports the channel and the content that I make. Uh, it literally all gets reinvested in one way or another anyway. But um, yeah, I'm not in it for that. I'm in it because I love it, basically. <laughs> um, I love what I do. I love the industry and I love sharing my day to day. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd say that as well, just because people have misconceptions about why I do what I do. Um, yeah, what did we say, 61.9. So I'll go um, measure that and cut that. We're gonna be eating into a new length, so we should have some, um, some holes drilled for me already, which would be nice. Right, that's what we wanna do. 61.9, so we want to be about there. This length of trunk is proper battered, to be fair. If I was using the whole length, I'd definitely be sending it back, but I just need that, so yeah, we'll get a prime cut out of this. Um, let's just send this all the way around. use a jigsaw to cut it. Um, I know some would use a grinder and that's what I used to use but as I get older I gain more experience. So I got a grinder a couple of years ago, I used to love it, cutting tube, trunking, tray, everything. It was like my go-to tool but as I get older, I've got two kids now as well, I do find unnecessary risk by using a tool such as a grinder. I try to, sh I tend to shy away from it. I still use one, don't get me wrong. But yeah, like a jigsaw does the job. You don't need a hot works permit. I'm in a lot more control of the jigsaw. Um, yeah, I just find it better. Um, and like the bandsaw again, I find it, you're in a lot more control of it. Um, I did my triple STS. Um, a year or so ago and a big thing about that because obviously it's risk assessment and it's you know there's loads of things to it but a big obviously part of it is risk assessment risk management and stuff and you'll be surprised how much stuff leads back to abrasive wheels um, whether it's grinders or you know petrol cutters or anything like that you'll be surprised how much risk is created by the tools and how much how many control measures you have to have in place and and the dangers of them and stuff and yeah as humans in the construction industry we love an abrasive abrasive wheel um, but yeah it's probably one of the worst man-made creations when you consider people getting hurt um, the risks it creates on site the hot works issues and all that sort of stuff um, and the misuse you see people misusing uh, grinders and stuff all the time. I've been guilty of it in the past um, myself, you know. But um, yeah, I just gone off of them. I've gone off of them. I do like the look of the little M12 one though, just for touching up bits of metalwork and stuff. But um, and yeah, sometimes you have to use a grinder, of course. I'm not saying that, but yeah, if I don't need to, I don't like to. So um, yeah, let's get um, let's get dressed up. We'll cut this, um, cut this trunk in. Right, okay, so. 
Now, I want to use these for the tees and I'll mark the holes for the bend onto it. So just from experience, I find the bends are a bit more true because what I do, I mean, you should really make up a template. And if I was doing a lot of it, again, I'd, I'd make up a template. But what I do is I literally just overlap them, make sure it's as true to, you know, what it would be. And then, um, yeah, just mark them through. And then again, take it out, slot it through. Um, and then, yeah, there's a bit you need to account for, but I sort of, I know to do that, but yeah, I wouldn't, I'd recommend making a template or just measuring basically, but it's just me being, being lazy, um, to be honest, but yeah, so that's in there. Boom, boom. Um, and yeah, basically you just want to favour that way a bit because of this lip and stuff, it's not all the way in. But yeah, it gives you a rough idea. Um, and then, yeah, that's the thing. So if these holes would be a lot bigger or you'd just make them bigger yourself, um, but because they're tapped, you want to get them bang on. Um, and I just find you're never going to do it, you know. Um, you might do, like I got lucky on you know, eight of the 10 over there, but like the one that you don't, just makes the trunk and look pants anyway when you've got to re-drill it out. So you only need one to let you down. Um, as if those weren't there, you'd be drilling them yourself, in which case, well, they'd be pre-made and they're generally bigger. So you've got a bit more tolerance and stuff. You're not trying to line up perfectly with a tapped thread. So you can have, you know, you can slide that in, for instance, clamp it up and just drill straight through the lot. It's, yeah. You know, swings and roundabouts, but I'm not completely sold on it. I think if you're doing full lengths and no cuts whatsoever, then of course it's great. But um, as soon as you come to cutting it and stuff, um, yeah, it gets a bit sticky then. So we'll drill these out and then, um, yeah, we will galve spray it, leave it to dry. Um, and then, yeah, we'll probably mark up our holes for the uni as well on the back of it once it's all, once these holes are done. It's like some weird, weird evil stuff, doesn't it? Bit, um, yeah, a bit 999 that, isn't it? Um, so now, we'll wait for that to dry. Um, we could probably, in the meantime, mark up our top trunking. So, yeah, I think we'll go do that. Right, so I just did all this thinking I'm filming and I weren't, um, but yeah, uh, it is what it is. So I'll just take you through what I've done. Um, so I've basically set the, the diameters of my tray between this first mark here and this last mark here. Um, so that's 150 mil in the, you know, across the span of that. And then here we've got a centre mark as well, or we did have originally a centre mark here, which indicates the middle of the tray. So once you've got that, you then know what sort of space you've got to deal with. Um, so then I just measured um, one bang on the edge here. So on this side of the tray, we've got four cables bundled together. So I'm literally right on the edge. They could just swoop off and swoop in here. Um, but that side of the tray is probably going to stay busy, stay like that. In the middle, we've got three cables, so I'm going to do them in a triangular fashion. Um, again, I've got one bang in the centre, facing the front, and then two at the back, lining through. And then this one here, we just got one singular cable, so I've just done it at the back because you could easily get another two armoured in or something either side or in front of it, so and it might get retied. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to you know mug the next guy off there, but it's basically working with the space you've got to determine something that's neat but also future proof. Um, obviously Obviously, this, you know, you can run, whoever comes here and takes it on is probably going to run a tray down the side and 
gland into the side of the trunk in rather than coming in here anyway. Um, but yeah, you're just trying to make it as, as easy for the next guy as possible. But then coming forward, I just set a good 10 mil off um, so I don't get involved with you know the back of the trunk in. And then you want a 10 mil gap because um, we're doing all 20s. So yeah, although that's there, obviously there's going to be a 10 mil radius around that that point. So um, yeah, that's why they're sort of set forward. But um, yeah, that's how I did a lot better job of explaining it before um, <laughs> when I actually did it as I did it, but none of it got recorded. So um, yeah, it's what it is. I'm going to drill all of these out now and then that other bit of trunking should be dry so we can jump back on that. So I'm using one of these Starrett um, hole saws, carbide tip or I don't know, they're just meaty ones. Um, we got them for stainless steel, but they're... Um, they're pretty good to be fair. Um, I've seen mixed reviews online, but um, yeah, I rate them. I think they're all right. And just pilot through. Um, so a great tip is to pilot them all beforehand while this is on the ground, same with any fuse board or anything. Um, but if you're in this situation like I am, it's still good to just pilot the, the main holes through because um, it basically gets weaker and weaker as you pepper it full of holes. So. If you've got your pilots done, you're sort of sort of halfway there. Um, it also means once the pilots are in, you might realise that what you've done is completely wrong and you've still got a bit of play because you've just done pilots rather than um, like proper holes. But um, yeah, it's also good to just pilot with a smaller bit and then go through with this, but I'm being a bit lazy to be honest with you. So now I'm just going to grab my SWA glands um, just so I can mark out the banjo holes for these four, yeah four, um, and then we'll give it a file, we'll give it a clean, obviously we've got to give it a good hoover out now as well due to all the swarf and what have you, um, then that should be dry so then we can start piecing together the trunk in, give it all a good hoover out and then we're pretty much ready to start uh, second fixing and putting it all away so yeah we'll do that. Now we just want to mark up these banjos, the best way I find is to use the banjo itself and you can't really go wrong then. Um, just trying to see what we're sort of looking at. So there'll be one there for sure. That one could just go straight ahead. I used to link the banjos out, but um, yeah, not anymore. If I don't have to, I need it if I really, really have to. Um, yeah, don't really make a difference, but it just means you can give someone a right nightmare on like uh, industrially, if you have a plan shut down or something. You've got to take, a, take an armoured out and everything's booked in. You've got your two hour time slot and the last thing you need is a shared banjo or something like that. Just to, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's annoyed me in the past. So it's got sort of knocked it on the head, but yeah. Um, right, so I'm just going to centre those between, centre this one between these two glands. Be about there. one I'm going to do the same it's about that much off I'd say yeah that would go and this one's going to send straight ahead and then this one also send straight ahead so, cool. So I'll drill them out and then, um, yeah, get that in, give it all a good hoover, good tidy up, and then we're, we're onto the fun bit, onto the cream, as they say. Right. Give this all a file, give it some galve treatment and then um, 
Yeah, we'll get that Sharpie off as well. I'll just show you that if I've got a Sharpie on me. So, um, the best way to get Sharpie off, funny enough, is Sharpie. So just go over everything you want gone. Off of metal, of course. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> right, so we've just over-sharpied, basically, and then just want to rub it off. I think it's the, you know, whatever chemicals are in the ink or whatever. They just loosen it um, and make it not so permanent anymore. Might need to double up, but, yeah. So obviously if you can get away with it, please don't do this in situ just because it makes your life a lot harder. But yeah, I'm just being a bit lazy to be honest. And here it's, you know, it's fine. But if you're just doing a panel or more holes, probably be best to take, take the damn thing down and just do it where you're comfortable, you know? Um, but yeah, it's not too, not too much drama with this. So I'm just gonna galve treat these um, now and then we'll get that corner piece and that drop on. So um, you can now join the channel as well, by the way. I had a few people kick off about it because I'd done a poll to ask who'd be interested and a few people said no. Well, 90% of people said no, but 10% um, of people said yes. So um, I had to do it, you know, 10% of people want to do it. So yeah, you can join the channel. There's different levels, uh, 299. I can't remember what the other ones are, to be honest. But um, yeah, you just get little benefits, you get little emojis, uh, you get to see videos early, you get discounts on loadout as well, which is good. Um, and the main thing is that you're supporting the channel. Um, some people wanna, I did like a, a um, premiere, I think, the other week, where you basically upload the video and like it premieres live to everyone. Don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. I'm new to all of this, but. I had someone giving like a tenner on that. Um, so like, yeah, people do want to do it, but if you don't want to do it, then that's fine. You just don't have to join join the channel. You get um, <clears throat> you don't miss out on anything. There'll still be videos every week. Um, yeah, nothing changes in that sense. It's just these additional benefits. So if you want these emojis, these discount codes for loadout. Um, if you want a little badge next to your name, so I've done like the phase colours. So I think it's like one month, three months, six months, one year, two years, three years or something. Um, and then, yeah, you get a little badge next to your name and the longer you are, it goes through the phases. So it goes through the old phases first and it goes on to the new phase, phase colors. So red, yellow, blue, brown, black, gray. Um, just little things like that, really, you know. Um, again, if you're not interested, they're just little gimmicky things. You know, a lot of them you can only do through this sort of channel membership thing, um, so. Yeah, but it's more just an excuse for people to support the channel uh, and people want to do that. So, yeah, I'm sorry if I annoyed anyone by doing it. I'm not going to mention it too much. Um, I mean, it's on the thingy anyway and big button saying join the channel anyway, but I just thought I'd talk about it and let people know that, you know, I ain't boring you off. Um, you're not going to miss out on any, anything if you don't. Subscribing is already... The, the number one thing you can do if you want to support want to support the channel but it's just for that 10% of people that 5% of people that want to go further and support further they can um, but yeah I just thought I'd address that Right, so for any lads or anything, learners that aren't familiar with um, Unistrut and Zebs and stuff, so this is the inner workings of it. Obviously that spring ideally would be a longer spring, a long reach spring for the deep uni, um, and that would basically hold it on these rails um, wedged between you know, the base of the uni and these rails. And then what they are is you get them in different, uh, you get different thread sizes on them. Um, or you can get all sorts of, of different Zebs to be fair. But we've basically got six mil ones where these six mil roofers pass through, screw in, and then as I tighten that up, you can see, even just doing it by hand, you can see it's pulling the trunk in against the uni and just, um, yeah, pulling it tight. So it's just a way of mounting stuff really, but I just thought I'd explain that for any people who aren't familiar with it, any learners or anything like that. I'm just gonna tighten these up now with um, Big Betty. 
and then um, it's just a case of putting some nuts in here to pin that in. Um, I haven't got the end cap, I'm going to grab that tonight, but yeah, giving it all a good hoover out, a good clean, um, and then we'll start glanding them in. I'm probably not going to get onto that today, but we'll see, see how we do for time. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'm going to screw these back. Right, now I'm just going to grab the hoover, hoover out all the swarf and what have you. Um, I'll bring some big whites tomorrow to get rid of any excess galve spray and stuff that's seeped over or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to lid it all up and that'll probably be it for today. We've also got to just do some final high level testing, just some R1, R2s um, on the four lighting circuits because the mupe's going back tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I'm going to rig up this clicks plug to short between live and earth. And then Cam's going to boom up, plug it into the end of the line, and I'll just buzz them out here. Um, so by the time that happens, it'll probably be, you know, half three, four o'clock anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to crack on hoovering, and then we'll hopefully get the lid all cut up. And then, uh, yeah, be a bit of testing and home time. <laughs> Right, so there it is in all its glory. Let's take this off here. Um, yeah, laser running up that edge. It's nice and straight. Um, yeah, I've done, um, because we had so much excess, um, like we literally just needed a tiny bit off that second length. It's good because you have excess lids. So what you can do is you can center all of your turnbuckles um, apart from that one up there um, that's also a bit warped because I think it's fighting against the enclosure and the uni behind it but I'm hoping once that end caps in it will sort of straighten that in um, and it's gonna have a load of armoureds pushing down on it as well um, but yeah I think where it's just obviously a bit in free air at the end it's just a bit buckled but um, yeah it's not perfect I need to neaten up some of these edges um, I need to wipe excess galve spray off um, big wipe it all down and do you know what I mean make it look real real nice but I'm pretty pretty happy with it to be honest with you um, one thing I don't like about the unitrunk is just a little thing really but the the manufactured uh, bends and stuff are like a different color as well so they like really stand out it just looks like you've not used the right components I guess um, soon enough it will all sort of go that way anyway um, it will dull and darken and the, and the galvanization will show more and more as it ages but yeah it's um, just on a new install it just looks a bit like I don't know what do you think I mean that bend up there is sweet but yeah it's just these two they're just slightly off but yeah um, I've got sharpie marks all over it too so I'll get some um, rubbing alcohol and stuff we'll just use a sharpie to clear all that up so tomorrow we'll get the main switch in, SPD in, get it all torqued up and all that. We'll get all the blanks in, breakers in, uh, contactors up there. We'll send the lighting circuits through the contactors, then down into the board. Do the same with the armoured, so they'll just go straight into the board though. Um, we'll put away this 35mm, uh, maybe get it labelled and tested. Don't really know. Um, yeah, I'll probably have Cam, unless these isolators turn up for the other units, I'll have Cam just helping me out anyway, so that'll be good. He'll be able to learn a bit too, and um, yeah, it might speed up the process a bit, so... Yeah, um, pretty chuffed with that trunk in though. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm well happy with that to be fair. I'm gonna, gonna stop and take a load of pictures from my Instagram in a sec. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna pack up because you have so much gear out just to do this type of work. But yeah, I'm gonna pack up and then it's just a case of getting those lighted circuits um, opened up so that cam can boom up to all of the end of lines once he's done he's going to boom up to the end of lines and we're going to get r1 r2s for all of them um and then we can safely say that that lifter can go tomorrow first thing and we are done high level um so yeah that's literally the last thing to do and i've just been putting it off just because i've got loads of testing to do so i don't really want to be wasting time testing but now obviously it's got to be done so yeah we'll do that um so i'll show you a bit of the testing and then that'll probably be it for today Right, so I'm just gonna we're just gonna do some R1 R2 testing. I thought I'd explain it for any learners or anything like that. Obviously, if you know what the crack is, then I apologise. But yeah, so we've got some high level lights basically, and a real bad sharpie. So we've got some high level lights set about the warehouse like so, um, 
and then we've got a fuse board in this corner. So we take a live up to the lights and it goes all the way through them and ends up at an end of line here. We'll label this like so. We've also got an earth which goes into all of them as well. Add a neutral, but I'm going to leave that out for clarity. So we've got a live and we've got our earth. So what we're measuring is the resistance of this loop. So if a fault is to occur at this furthest point, at this end of line, um, we want to measure what the maximum earth fault loop impedance value is, and that's basically the, the resistance, the impedance that it's going to be met with when the fault is coming round and then returning back down to earth. Um, so we just want to make sure that it's within our prescribed value for our breaker. The reason that is, is because each breaker, depending on the size, the type, is given a, a maximum earth fault loop impedance value and as long as you're below that it will trip within the prescribed time. So we are looking for this circuit it will be 0.4 disconnection time and then I don't know the, the maximum permitted value for our breaker but we'll look it up um, we're sure that it will be compliant anyway. But what we're measuring like I say is the resistance of this loop um, at the furthest point because here it's all well and good but it's going to be a lower resistance so we want to be measuring at the furthest point so that we've got the worst case uh, sort of value and then yeah as long as it's below the prescribed time by the breaker then we know um, that um, yeah it will be all right obviously we got, need to combine that with our um, with our ZE to give us our ZS, but yeah, we're doing a dead test to basically determine that. It also proves that you've got live and earth continuity throughout the whole circuit, which is great. Um, and you can also use it to prove polarity as well. So it's a real good test. Um, it's all completed dead, um, just because you're just measuring resistance across the conductors. We've got high level clicks plugs. So we're gonna be using this and we're just gonna short between live and earth. And what that means is when cam booms up, he can just clip this in and then I can be set with us, sat with the tester down this end um, where it's a lot easier, not at the top of a mute. And then, uh, yeah, we can get a test value. It also means Cam hasn't got to unscrew any of the clicks plate or anything like that. He hasn't got to disturb the installation. He's just got to click this in and then um, we're ready to go. This is the new black click range. Um, Hager sent me out some bits, but I just had to nick the plug for today. Um, but yeah, check that out. They do it all in uh, black plastic now, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to link this out um, in here and then um, Cam's going to boom up. We'll plug it in and we just got to do that for all four lighting circuits. That'll give us our R1, R2 values. And then when we combine that with the, um, the R1, R2 values of the sub main um, or you know, our ZE basically, then um, that will give us a whole picture that we can then compare that value against the, the maximum permitted by the breaker and make sure everything's going to trip on time. So yeah, um, that's it. It's probably been explained completely wrong, but I hope it helps someone anyway. Um, we're going to boom up now and show you how we do it in practice. You can do it with a plug top too. I must stress that obviously this is a dead test. Do not plug anything like this in live and make sure you are competent and qualified in what you are doing if you're doing stuff like this, um, because yeah, accidents can happen very easily if you don't know what you're doing. But yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna give this a cam. Cam's gonna boom up to the first one. I'm gonna get the TIS out and uh, yeah, we'll get testing. He's on a right pickle. So we're gonna be doing continuity and resistance. Just gonna press the help button because I always get the leads wrong just because this tester is different to others. So yeah, you, it's like continuity, the first time I used it, it's actually between you use the um, live and neutral leads, um, which most testers aren't like that. So yeah, I was sat there for ages like swearing at it and that. But um, yeah. So we want blue and we want black. That wants to get plugged in there. So we just want to null our leads as well. Obviously we can have a little bit of added value from that clicks plug. There we go, cool. Right, so now I'm just going to get comfy um, up there. And I've got the four circuits already stripped, so that's handy. Right, so cams in, I've got a bit of a guessing game of what is what, but that's an emergency and we only got two emergency circuits, so it can only be one of these. 
0.92. There you go. So I'm just going to grab my phone. So um, yeah, that's going to be sweet to be honest with you. We're going to have like a B10 or a B6, uh, sorry, a C10 or a C6 breaker. Um, the external impedance, the ZE, is quite low at this board um, and those breakers um, are really, really tolerable. Um, so yeah, that's going to be well within. That's all sweet, Cam. Just to confirm, he's unplugged and I'm now getting nothing, so that's great. Um, I can then just fold this up so I know that one's been done. I'm going to record that it's that lighting circuit like positionally. Obviously none of these cables are labelled up, but when we get them energised and come to do our functional tests, um, then I'll know what circuit number that is, and then I can fill it out that way, but I'll just for now know that I'm going to write some notes to accompany this, but the first photo is that circuit, second photo is that circuit, etc. Um, and then, yeah, we'll obviously button it all up properly when, um, when it's all put away and it's all live. So yeah, just wait for Cam to go over to the next one. And then, uh, yeah, we'll test that. What's that, mate? Lovely time. Is that an emergency, that one? Uh, that yeah, I know. Is it, is it a chunkier cable, would you say, or you can't tell? Unplug, mate. Yeah. Plug in again. Yeah. Hang on, mate. That's better. Cool. 1.51. Cool, mate. That one's sweet. So that one's a little bit higher, which is to be expected because we're getting further down the warehouse and obviously navigating the steels. So the cabling still soon, uh, st soon starts to add up. Um, it's got a thumbs down because I think it's been set that anything over a gnome to flag it up, but obviously um yeah that's not an issue but i think obviously the tester thinks it's an issue um, one thing i will say about these tis is, is they're really quick off the mark like when you do continuity or live testing and stuff they're like proper quick which some testers like even my qtech which i love um honestly i can't put it down i'm giving this a go but my go-to testers my qtech and i learned on a fluke i like i've got undying love for fluke but i know a lot of people don't rate them and there's obviously other testers better alternatives and stuff but yeah I, um, I just like the, the way a fluke feels and the way it works and stuff but um, yeah this is quicker than them for sure it's a rapid tester um, it plays no games so that's um, that's a cool feature about it I do like the colored display and stuff as well um, yeah just feels a bit more modern and like some of these testers it's like got like a calculator screen in it you know um, so yeah, you in big boy? Couldn't guess them all right. Two point four eight. So yeah, we're getting higher. It's hot, higher and higher. Right, cool. That's all good, mate. So yeah, obviously that is high. But if when you think we put this on like a C six or something, you know, we're going to be good for like. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know it's well high. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, and obviously this it's existing circuits as well, so we could always introduce an RCD um, for fault protection as well, but uh, it will be sweet, you know, we will be sweet. Also, going back to the validation video, I got it wrong, right but wrong. So we've been dealing with the intake a lot here, um, so like the HV side of it and stuff. Um, and it's basically it's PMB, so protective neutral bonds. So they are the same thing. So they're, yeah, they're the same thing on the transformer, on the live side of the transformer. Um, but yeah, as far as the LV is concerned, it is TNS. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna TNS all the units. None of them are connected or anything like that, so they don't need to be TT'd in that sense. We're gonna bond all the steel work. Um, the only thing we might do is like that one that was real high. Obviously, a lot of the breakers, um, like the 32 amp breakers and stuff, are gonna fail straight out the door because the ZD is so high. So um, yeah, we, we might keep the TT in for that one. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, it is TNS, not, I did say it's TNCS, and technically it is at source, but as far as the LV is concerned, the, the earthing comes in separately um, via the sheaf of, of all of the cables and stuff, and it is a separate system. So off the transformer, the earth and the neutral are separate. Um, you take a few steps into the UKPN substation, they are the same thing, but yeah, <laughs> um, obviously as far as we're concerned, they're not, um, and it, it gets treated as such. So. Yeah, get this last one tested. Yeah. 2.07, so that's better. Okay, okay, okay. 2.07, sweet mate, nice one. Plug it back in and uh, come back mate. Cool. So that's those um, high level circuits validated, everything else we can get to because it, it returns back down to a workable height. Um, so yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna get all of these, it'll be a week's time, but just to give you a bit of a teaser, I'm gonna be getting all of these SWAs and NYYs glanded into here. All of the NYYs are gonna go into this enclosure here. Um, that one's gonna be annoyingly short, but I couldn't make this any higher. It's just getting ridiculous basically. Um, so yeah, that will have to get extended, but the others should be long enough to just float straight into the, um, the contactors and then all of the armoured's going to get come round, drop into the top of the board. We'll do SPD, we'll do main switch, torque settings and all sorts of stuff. Um, we'll be putting that away as well, maybe a bit of labelling and stuff too, depending on how we get on. But yeah, it's going to be a great video, so make sure you check in uh, next Sunday at six o'clock for that. Um, yeah, that is it for today. I'm going to get packed up, um, load up the car and stuff. Still haven't got my van. Um, yeah, don't get me started on that, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by the next video, um, not tomorrow's one, but the, the videos after that when I'm doing the mains, hopefully I've got it by then. Um, but yeah, as always guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, um, please like, subscribe, hit that bell button, really supports the channel and what I'm trying to do. Um, check out um, Tradeify, link will be in the description. Uh, check out the Hager Gang Rewards as well. We're fitting Hager here. They get an awesome rewards program, so just check that out. And um, yeah, once again, thanks for watching. I'll be back next Sunday, six o'clock, so make sure you tune in. Um, yeah, let's leave it there. I'll catch you on the next one.